In this video, we'll see how you can calculate Einstein sums with the einsum function to quickly and efficiently multiply and sum arrays. Let's start by looking at a simple example. Here we have 1D arrays A and B, each with four elements. If we calculate the einsum of I comma J goes to I, A comma B, we get back the array 0, 22, 44, 66. So what the hell just happened? In pseudocode, you could describe what just happened as the following. Initialize output as an array of zeros the same size as A. For each I, for each J, output I plus equals AI times BJ. So the first parameter of einsum is the subscript string. Assuming we're operating on two arrays A and B, it always has the form subscripts for A's axes, comma subscripts for B's axes, arrow subscripts for output axes. In this case, A has one dimension, so we give it the letter I. B has one dimension, so we give it the letter J. And by using the letter I for the output array, we're saying the output array has one dimension and it's the same length as A. In other words, element AI will always feed into a corresponding output I. Let's see some more examples, and I think things will start to soak in. If we do einsum i comma j arrow nothing, a comma b, we get back 132. We could rewrite this process in pseudocode as initialize output equal to zero for each i, for each j, output plus equals a i times b j. Since there's no letters to the right of the arrow in the subscript string, that means our output will have zero dimensions. In other words, our output will be a scalar. And like before, we iterate over each i and a, and each j and b, adding a i times b j to the sum. What if we do einsum z comma z goes to z? In this case, the pseudocode would be initialize output as an array of zeros the same size as a and b. For each z, output z plus equals az times bz. So this example is equivalent to doing the element-wise product a times b. How about this one? s comma t goes to st. In this case, we get back a four by four array, and you could write the pseudocode for the process as initialize output as a four by four array of zeros. For each s, for each t, output st plus equals AS times BT. Einsum really starts to shine in two dimensions. Let's make two by two arrays, C and D. If we do an Einsum like IJ comma JI goes to nothing, we get back 37. Before we write out the pseudocode for this one, let's dissect the subscript string and what it tells us. The bit before the first comma is IJ. This tells us the first array we're operating on has exactly two dimensions. The bit after the comma is ji. This tells us the second array we're operating on also has exactly two dimensions. Now also, the length of its first dimension matches the length of the first array's second dimension since they both use subscript j, and the length of its second dimension matches the length of the first array's first dimension since they both use subscript i. The bit after the arrow is empty, so we know the output will have zero dimensions and thus will be a scalar. Now we can write the pseudocode as initialize output equal to zero for each i, for each j, output plus equals cij times dji. Notice that on the surface, this particular Einstein sum is equivalent to doing np.sum c times d transpose. The difference is that einsum only visits each element once, whereas sum c times d transpose visits each element twice, first when it does the multiplication, and second when it does the sum. More importantly though, sum c times d transpose creates a temporary array that takes up memory before it gets summed into a scalar. Einsum avoids this memory consumption, which if you're dealing with big arrays can make a significant difference.